So the, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs were firecrackers compared to what comes later in the Cold War. They were between 15 and 20 kilotons, so the equivalent of 15 to 20,000 tons of conventional explosives, which sounds terrifying, and it is. I'm not trying to take away the horror of what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but they're tiny compared to what comes later. An atom bomb is essentially you get uranium or plutonium, you compress it, that causes fission, causes the atoms to split and releases energy. That's how you make a, an atom bomb work. But they're limited in size, about 500 kilotons roughly is the biggest you can make that bomb. But then, when technology advanced from you know, the late 1940s into the 1950s, you can take an atom bomb and use that to create the burst of energy needed to create a fusion reaction, which is what happens in the sun. And that fusion reaction causes light atoms to fuse down to heavier elements. That releases energy, and that's infinitely scalable. So during the Cold War, we saw weapons uh, that were in the, the tens of megatons, so like the equivalent of 10 million tons of conventional explosives. The largest American detonation was Castle Bravo in the Pacific, which accidentally was meant to be five megatons, but was nearer 15 megatons, a gig world's biggest ever radiological accident. The Soviets in the 1960s tested what was called the Tsar bomb, which was 50 megatons. It wasn't a practical weapon of war, it was a demonstration of, of, you know, of masculinity and of all the things that kind of like typified the Cold War. It was the, you know, the, the international grandstanding, look how big a bomb we can build. And those large bombs were relatively common the, in the kind of like 1 to 10 megaton range. They were on top of missiles. These days, those still exist, but as far as I'm aware, and we're not quite clear about the size of the, the warheads that are on, say, British Trident missiles, are something in the 100 kiloton range. So, but about five times, five to six times the, si the power of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, but much smaller and much more advanced and much more precise weapons, if you can ever make a nuclear mm -hmm. weapon. Precise. So if you drop, say, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bomb on Liverpool in the way it was done, in 1945, you'd probably kill between 25 and 30,000 people straight off and see somewhere between 50 and 100,000 people very seriously injured, and many of those would die. Fallout would be created over a large part, over the Wirral would be irradiated, and there'd be a firestorm through big chunks of Liverpool. Uh, but they're tiny. If you scale that up to the big hydrogen bombs, uh, say something like Castle Bravo, if that was detonated over Liverpool, Liverpool would be gone. Liverpool would be gone. The entire place would be on fire. The world would be on fire. Out to Warrington would be on fire. Uh, Manchester would be heavily irradiated. The entire north, most of the northwest would be irradiated to a point of uninhabitability. And that's, I think, the difference in scale between these weapons. Those kind of things don't, uh, they're not weapons of war that exist today. There are big bombs still around, there are big American and, and Soviet warheads, but the most common ones are much, 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 much smaller uh, yield, as they're called, weapons. So, but the effects of a nuclear weapon depend on, on the yield of the weapons. You can go from the relatively tiny ones, which cause, say, on Liverpool, casualties in the tens of thousands, to something like a multi-megaton hydrogen bomb which could cause, if dropped on London, for example, cause casualties, deaths in the millions with one weapon. So it very much depends on the scale of what you're talking about. We often look at, when people are thinking about nuclear weapons, the images that are used are of the big American Pacific tests. Castle Bravo, Castle Romeo, these apocalyptic, giant, red and orange tinged mushroom clouds of these huge explosions. But they're the, big, they're the big ones. They don't represent the majority of, of, of nuclear weapons. But we see that, that that's, that's nuclear warfare. But actually what, what would be used are much smaller. Terrifying, utterly terrifying. But those gigantic apocalyptic images are perhaps not representative of what nuclear weapons actually are. Mm.